Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about what works and what doesn't work. So we're going to give you five of each. So if you are in business or thinking about getting into business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, an American window cleaner magazine, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all of this stuff. Uh, Have a look around. Obviously, this show has been on for a long time. If you've seen it at all, it's been on for like five years. So there's hundreds and hundreds of episodes to go back, watch, listen, all that fun stuff. It's a podcast, so play it while you're working. Uh, Soak up a little bit of business. Not every episode is good, and I don't know anything more than anybody. I'm just a guy with a camera. But hopefully you get something out of it. And if you do and you want to show a little love, please let me put your orders in. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource, and that's what I do. I put in orders. So if you have questions on anything, if you want to have a rep, which you do, give me a call. Shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. And listen, I have something to tell you. Are you listening? Unfortunately, some of you aren't using me still, and uh, gosh... I want to be a rep. I don't know what I can tell you to be your rep. But if you're putting orders in yourself, let me do it. It costs you nothing extra. Uh, You could text me, call me, whatever. And uh, anyway, there you go. It's easy. And that's a shameless plug. I have to uh, ask because I want to have all of you as customers. And it genuinely, genuinely helps me out. So thank you to all of you. And what else genuinely, genuinely helps me out is if you get a subscription, to the greatest window cleaning magazine of all time. If you want to up your game, if you want to be bigger, better, stronger than your competition, get the American Window Cleaner magazine. There are still some of you out there in this country that are not getting the magazine. By the way, we also have Canadian subscriptions available. If you're in Canada, you can uh, go there. But just go to awcmag.com forward slash sub. Get the magazine. Inside the magazine, on top of articles, posters, just awesome window cleaning content made specifically and only for the window cleaning industry. The magazine's been around since 1986, by the way. But there's also a custom sticker sheet of window cleaning stickers. So if you want like some cool things to have on your buckets and everything else and just be like proud of our industry, please support the industry, support me, support whatever. Uh, AWCMAG.com. Go get your subscription. It would be super rad. Um, by the way, if you're putting an order in with me, tell me you want the Cool Kid sticker. Uh, we are still on version three of the Cool Kid sticker. It is limited edition. Once these ones are out, I don't ever reprint them. I get uh, all new ones. So please let me know if you want that sticker. Anyway, okay. Longish, longest shameless plug ever. I'm sorry. I gotta make some cheddar too, man. It's the end of the year. <laughs> no, but today we are talking about what works and what doesn't work. And I love this. We do this uh, usually once a year, something along those lines of what works and what doesn't work because I love the conversation that it brings. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and comment um, or text me, even better if you want to have direct conversation, or start a thread in Pro Window Cleaning or any other window cleaning group and like, what are your guys' thoughts on the last episode of WCR Nation? Actually, that'd be pretty much amazing because then you could share the episode and get other people watching or listening or knowing that's out there. So... But let me know what your thoughts are. But I'm going to dive right in because we got five of each. The first one that works is five ups. If you're not doing those, all it is is super simple. You do one house. You hand out a door hanger when you're done to the house to the left, cross the street, three across, and the one next to it on the right. So you're doing a total of six houses. You've done one, and you've dropped five around that one. All it is is a simple door hanger. Mine that I used was the pardon your glare one. It just says, pardon the glare. I'm so sorry, but we cleaned your neighbor's windows and they look amazing. So it probably is going to be extra shiny in your area. And I just want to apologize. But if you want your windows clean, come yeah, blah, blah, blah. You get it, right? This does two things. It A, basically tells everybody that you're there, you're advertising, you're putting it out there. But B, it creates the Joneses effect. If you don't know what that is, the Joneses effect means that uh, everybody wants to keep up with the Jones and do what they're doing because they're doing it. They have to do it. They can't be left out. Right? 
So five ups work. If you're not doing that, make sure to do it super quick. Uh, what doesn't work is billboards. If you've done billboards and they've produced amazing things for you, tell me. But I've not once heard in the 16 years that I've been doing this, probably longer than that, ever had anybody tell me a billboard works. Not ever. Why? Because you're driving. You're driving past a billboard. Any information you put on there, you're driving by so fast you can't read it. You're not going to write down a website. You're not going to write down a phone number. You're not going to do anything other than it's going to remind you if you do some window cleaning. Oh, we need to get our windows cleaned. That's all. Not you. It just reminds people of window cleaning. So why pay for the billboard if it doesn't work? You're not going to get a return on investment. You know what does work on billboards? Fast food. Fast food works on billboards. It's really nice. You drive by, you see a big cheeseburger. It says next exit. It's all you need to know. I don't have to write anything down. I go, oh, yeah, I'm kind of hungry. Ooh, McDonald's coming up. It's the turn. That's what works, right? Billboards don't work. And I don't know how much a billboard is anymore. If you know what a billboard costs, by the way, this is... Uh, I've looked into it a bunch of times throughout my time as a window cleaner, but uh, prices were really cheap. Uh, you can get the digital ones now that are even cheaper, and now you put up some information that is up even shorter period of time. But anyway, uh, what does work is EDDM. Now, I want to just preface this because I talk about EDDM a lot, and I find that people that do EDDM uh, end up not doing it right. And I've talked about this quite a bit, but if you're doing EDDM, there's a specific way to do it. It's not like any other uh, advertising where you put an ad out, you're like, all right, let's see what it does. No. <clears throat> to do EDDM right, by the way, EDDM stands for Every Door Direct Mail. That is a uh, program from the post office. Basically, you pick carrier routes. The website's super dope. You click, you can see it all on a map and whatever. You pick areas. And then you do all the work about putting things together and counting them up and all that. And then you give them to them and say, I want these there. And they just blanket that um, postal route. Every single property on the post route gets it. So good or bad, you cover a lot of area. A lot of people get your content for really, really cheap. But it's not all targeted, right? But the way to do EDDM, and it's the hardest part about EDDM because people don't want to do it this way. If you're doing EDDM, you know. I know guys that are doing 10K a month in EDDM, right? But if you do an EDDM campaign, it has to work like this. You send out one postcard, one design, nothing changes, right? You can get, say, say you get 6,000 pieces printed. If you got 6,000 pieces printed, which is a weird number, but... It's early and I don't want to do hard math. Uh, it means you're sending to 2,000 people. But why is there 6,000? Because you're sending to those 2,000 people the same card three times. You send it Monday this week, Monday next week, Monday the week after. Every single week, you send the exact same card to the exact same people. And you go, well, that's weird. I'm just going to take 6,000 and hit 6,000 people because that's going to be better. No, it's EDDM. You're sending junk mail. And if you've spent lots of time making an EDDM um, thing or you have flyers or whatever, you go, no, 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 no. Everybody else's junk mail, uh, mine is valuable. No, it's not. It's not. Junk mail is an ad. You're sending an ad. You're taking uh, uh, all the things, a template, or you're making it yourself. You're making an ad and you're sending it to people. That's what we are. That's what we have to do. You have to send an ad. Not that ads are bad, but understand that we're ads, right? We are junk mail. You are not sending real value. You're sending junk mail because we're a luxury business, right? So by sending it to the same people three times, same card, all of a sudden the familiarity comes in and the... Um, the subliminal kind of connection is made. And you'll see if you do it three times, three weeks, same piece, same people, week one ROI will be garbage. Week two ROI will be better. And week three, it'll be even better. I know guys that are sending the same postcard to the same people 
all year. Your ROA has got to be amazing eventually. Because here's the thing. If you're sending it to 2,000 people, you're picking up like at the end of the three, you're maybe picking up 10 people out of that 2,000. That would be a great ratio even if. Right? 10 people, by the way, at an average ticket of say, you know, $300 or whatever. Right? Depending on prices, that could be $3,000 you're bringing in. It's great. But even if you did 10 people, or even if you got a full percentage, which is pretty rare, but say you got a full percentage out of that, right? Say you got, out of those 2,000 people, 20 people. That means you still have 90% of those people you have not gotten to use you. Now, if your routes are right and everything else, you can send that all out there to them specifically and now they are continuing to, that's why you could just keep advertising the same people over and over and over and over because you're not going to get all of them ever. Anyway, EDDM does work. What doesn't gift golf cards, not gift cards because I can't talk, golf cards. You know, scorecards in the back of a scorecard, everybody's like, oh, they called me. They said I was chosen. They said it was only $300 and I'm on 10000 Neat. Do you play golf? Do you know anybody who plays golf? Ask them what they've ever seen on the back of a card. Nothing. Because guess what? They're not looking at the back of the card. Here's where a golf cart doesn't work. And I'll just touch on this quickly. But if you're having a really good game, guess what? You're not looking at the back of the card. You're looking at the front of the card. Because you're having a great game. If you're having a bad game, you're ignoring all of it. Because you're like, you know, screw this. I don't hate this game. I'm throwing my clubs in the lake. There is no time where somebody's on a golf course, relaxing, going through a park, having a beer or smoking a cigar, relaxing with buddies, that they also go, oh, I think I might want some window cleaning to be scheduled. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. The other side of it is men are not our target market, and guess who majority plays golf? Men. So why are you advertising to them? That'd be like, you know, uh, sending a a postcard to everybody who uh, uses an Airbnb. Well, it's not their house. They're not paying for that. Why would you even spend, like, think about where we're advertising when you advertise golf cards don't work. Even if they're cheap, don't do it. What does work? SEO. SEO works amazingly. It will absolutely be your number one um, form of advertising is your SEO. It's going to be your site being found by people. That's what SEO means. Your website. Hopefully it's not garbage. If it's garbage, you still, no matter how many people see it, it could be still garbage, right? But have a company, build it. I talk about Monk SEO all the time because I love him. He's an awesome guy. He's literally uh, like a personal friend. Um, but he does websites and SEO. Anyway, you know my my um, uh, story. Uh, they took me from no business, not at all, to literally on the first page of Google within three months. Like, mind-blowing stuff. Anyway, he's built a bunch of sites for me. Amazing stuff. Uh, Monk SEO if you want to check him out. But anyway, on that same side of it is if you have a website and it's being found, it will be your number one paid advertisement you ever do. And it's the cheapest form of advertising. Some people are like, oh yeah, I'm spending $750 a month. How is that cheap? Okay. 50% of the people who call you from advertisement minimally, right? Yes, referrals will always be great. Referrals are king, but you didn't pay for a referral. A referral is not advertising. That is something completely different, right? We're talking advertising. But even if 50% of your new work comes in from that, if you do $5,000 a month in new work, which is pretty low, but maybe that's where you are. Maybe you're building this thing up, right? $2,500 is coming from the website. You're paying seven fifty. You're not paying anything. You're investing to get twenty five hundred. If I can invest seven fifty, but now make ten thousand dollars a month, however much you're getting, the better the SEO. The longer that SEO plan works, the better your website will be. And I guarantee you that will be your number one advertising venue of everything we talk about. SEO is absolute king, absolute king. But you can't have a garbage website, by the way. It's like having a billboard. If I put on a billboard, any message. It could be a good message or a bad message, right? 
that's if your website's a good website or a bad website. But if I have a message on a billboard and I put that billboard in an alley, guess what? Only the, the three people who walk through that alley in a month will see it. But with SEO, I put that same billboard on a um, an interstate, a downtown Manhattan, right? Why do you think that there are so many billboards on uh, Times Square? Because of the amount of people, by the way. I know I just told you billboards don't work. They don't work for window cleaning. I'm just saying as like a, a analogy, basically, a message. Say you want to put in there, say, you know, two plus two is four, whatever the message is. But you put it on a billboard that people see, now people will read your message depending on whatever the message is. That's SEO versus website. SEO will get people to look at your website. Having a good website is what people will take and remember. What doesn't work, which I shouldn't even have to say this, is yellow pages. If you're still in the phone book, I beg you to get out of it. I beg you to look at your numbers. How many people hired you out of that? I would really like to know because the last time that I did it, I had one $119 job. This is years and years ago before when my minimum was 99 bucks. $119 job I got out of it after paying three or four phone books for a year, I got one job out of the phone book. I was just wasting money, wasting money. Remember, you guys talk about how SEO is expensive. You remember phone books? $250 a book, a month, right? SEO is so much worth it. Get out of the phone book. It doesn't work. What does work, and you guys will hate me for this, is Home Advisor. Home Advisor works. You have to be fast and you have to do it right, just like anything. There is no magic wand where you can just not have to learn how to do things. But if you do Home Advisor right, you will get a ton, a literal poo ton of uh, new leads sent to you right away, booked, instant. It'll cost you money, sure. But if I said, hey, I'm going to give you a job, it's $400 is what they're willing to pay for it. Would you give me $25 for that? You'd be like, yes. Well, it's not guaranteed, obviously. But the better you are, the more you get. I am willing to pay that. I'm willing to pay that. People complain about it and what they are. And yeah, Home Advisor as a company sucks, but the process works. It really, really works. Home Advisor works, no matter if you like it or hate it. The problem with Home Advisor is you end up spending some money and you have to do it right. Here's how to do it right, real quick. I'll touch on that. When it comes into you, you call them instantly and keep them on the phone because guess what? Everybody else is trying to call them. Get them on the phone and say, hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I got your uh, um, uh, uh, request on uh, Home Advisor. And uh, I'd love to just uh, look at your property real quick using some satellite imagery. You got a second? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Well, what's your address? Get all that stuff. Get it in. Calls are coming in. I'm just uh, answering all these questions, right? I'm taking a good five-minute phone call. And at the very end of that phone call, I go, great. Well, by the way, we're bidding over the phone because bidding over the phone makes sense if you're not bidding over the phone. Look at doing that. But anyway, uh, 2023 goals. But um, you're telling them everything. And then when it's all said and done, you go, okay, great. Well, your uh, home price for uh, uh, inside, outside track sales and, and whole kit and caboodle. Uh, by the way, I put it the other way. You always want the dollar to be before the message. Uh, but I say, okay, so the price for your property is $399. And that's windows. That's the inside, outside, tracks, sills, and frames. All the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, done and we have availability either Tuesday the 13th or Wednesday the 14th. Both of them are either a nine o'clock appointment or we also have a one o'clock if that would work better for you. Well, guess what? That call, I just told them the price. I told them my availability. Which one did you want? I didn't say, do you want a book? I said, which one? Oh, great. Well, Tuesday yeah, morning. Actually, I could be off work. Yeah, let's do Tuesday. Cool. 9 a.m. Uh, that works perfect. I got you in the books. Uh, if anything changes, let me know, but we will be there bright and early. I'm going to introduce ourselves or whoever your operations officer, just so you know, your uh, operations officer will go ahead and knock on the door, let you know they're there. They'll explain the whole process to you and we'll go from there. But if you have any other questions before that, please let me know. Take the time, right? They want it off their brain. That's why they went there. They don't want to book it with somebody else. Speed is key in home advisor. If you do it right like that, you can book 80, 90% of those. And they're just throwing these leads for you. Boom. Yeah, I just paid $25 for that phone call, but I'm just going to make $399. I invested $25. You don't pay for marketing. The only time you pay for marketing or ads is if they don't 
they don't produce, then you pay. But if they do produce, then you're investing. And all of you are investing in something. You're investing in, in stocks or, or IRAs or savings accounts. You're, you're putting your money in a savings account that's yielding 0.5%. You can take that, and that's not an ROI of 0.5%. That's an actual uh, on-cash asset type thing. You can take that same money, put it into investing in yourself with good SEO, with uh, the proper you know ads, and make back $20,000 in one month. What? You can't invest anything like that. No stock ever has done that kind of number, which you can do in good advertising. Invest in yourself. Anyway, hi, horse. I'm jumping off. Home Advisor works. You may hate it, but it works. You know what doesn't, though, is the BBB. Before I was in business, I thought the Better Business Bureau was just that. The Bureau of, you you got a five-star rating on the Better Business Bureau? You know who thinks that now? Old people. Old people are my demographic. Yeah, because old people don't understand how the Better Business Bureau works. If they say, are you accredited by the Better Business Bureau? I say, actually, I think the Better Business Bureau is a scam. They actually require us to pay them hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month for them to tell everybody that we're accredited. You cannot be accredited unless you're paying them hundreds of dollars a month. And it just doesn't really do anything for me. We do still have an A-plus rating on the Better Business Bureau, and we have five-star reviews. I have 280 five-star reviews on Google. Like Google's the new Better Business Bureau. I don't have to go through Better Business Bureau. If somebody's finding you through the Better Business Bureau, okay, it could be. But for the most part, they're going to see you, maybe, and then find you on everything else. Make sure everything else is strong. Make sure your reviews work and are working for you. And uh, don't put too much faith in the Better Business Bureau. The BBB is weird, by the way. I literally used to think it was like a real thing, but then you have to pay them. You have to pay them. So I can't be accredited unless I pay them to be accredited. It's not even a training thing. It's not like, oh, I got the certification and I'm paying because I'm upkeeping this certification. You're just paying them for them to say, oh, yeah, yeah no, he's good. Doesn't seem right. And I just want to jump off for just one second here. There's a bunch of other stuff, right? Uh, Home Advisor, we got Angie's List. Angie's List used to be really, really good. Angie's List used to literally be like next door where uh, people went on Angie's List to brag about people and to talk about bad companies. It was great. Angie's List eventually turned into a business, which I'm never against business, but. Uh, the benefit to Angie's List is a little bit not quite where it was. Here's the thing. You have cred, and then you start to have it as a business, and then people uh, see it as you wanting to make more money versus trying to help people, which in this world, for the most part, most people don't do things to not help um, that don't genuinely want something out of it to some degree. I do this podcast because I love helping people. And if you've talked to me at all, you know that. But there's an underlying side of it is I am a rep. I own American Window Cleaner Magazine. I make money. And how I live and pay my bills is if you, I help you enough that you want to, which you're buying supplies anyway, buy your supplies through me. right? I don't make money if you just go to windowcleaner.com and buy without me. right? If you hit go and I don't hit go... I don't make money. So my ultimate goal is for you to use me, right? So that's where my shameless plugs come in. And my shameless plugs have worked. I've had a lot of amazing people. You guys are awesome out there. There's some of you who listen and have heard every episode of this or even three episodes and they go, man, I'm using this dude. He's my guy. And I get to be your rep. I get to be the person that you call for questions and bidding and everything. And then when you come to buy, I'm the one that does it. I got people who send me texts on Saturday like, hey, man, when you get in on Monday, put my order in. It's amazing how many people go out of the way to help me. And a lot of times, either they want to be nice or they get something out of it. They get maybe knowledge or they like the show or they just want to hear some dumb guy with a crooked nose babble. 
By the way, if you're on YouTube, you can see my crooked nose. It's bad. Uh, if not, you've seen me in real life. That's uh, it's bad. No, I was not a boxer. But with all that being said, once a business turns into wanting money over what they're doing to help and that overshadows it, that's where Better Business Bureau went. That's where Angie's List went, right? Home Advisor started saying, we take money from the contractor, but we help the people, right? Thumbtack. We take money from the companies, but we help the people. It's still differentiated. As soon as you try to skate the issue that you're trying to make money, like, oh, no, Better Business Bureau. No, it's not the Better Business Bureau. It's a company. It's a company that makes money. Their only job is to make money, which, again, we have to do. But as soon as they lose sight of that, it discredits them, right? So, so keep that in mind. Don't have a bad rating, but I would rather see you have 50 five-star reviews on Google than accreditation with the Better Business Bureau. And guess what? The Google reviews will be there forever, and you don't have to pay every month to keep them. Google's actually phenomenal if you think about all the things that they give you for absolutely free. They do, they do put ads up. They pay for ads, right? Here's how that works. Have you ever wondered how like email works or search engines or they don't make money? How do they make money? Well, because if if I say, hey, I'm Google.com and I have 1.2 billion people click on Google.com every single month, I can sell ad space pretty expensive they have lots of other things right but that's how they work and the other sides of it is uh money to be accredited is stupid anyway i'm getting off my high horse but better business builder doesn't work what does work and is probably the greatest single thing you'll ever hear in any show not to pat myself on the back just saying is the dentist close now i've talked about this a thousand times and a lot of you uh, regulars are like oh here he goes but let me let me let me be completely blunt with you when i'm recording this we're going into 2023 we're weeks away from a brand new year it's time to change you your company how it runs to either grow to strengthen or to go backwards and lose money it's time to change something. Why not do the dentist close starting now in 2023? Why not do that? Let me explain what the dentist closes. When you go to the dentist, when you're all done and them poking and prodding and doing everything else, great, here's your little bag and your next appointment is this date. And you have the next appointment. They send you a reminder, you never question it. In fact, I just had my dentist um, send me a thing and say, hey, oh, by the way, uh, we're actually going to be closed in January, the date that you have your cleaning. Uh, go ahead and give us a call to reschedule uh, to just another day. Oh, great. Oh, crap. Yeah, let me call. How many companies do that, right? The dentist closes when you're all said and done with use, doing service for somebody. You say, okay, great. Everything looks great. Here's all the paper, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so your next appointment, did you want to do that in three months or did you want to wait six months? Six months puts you to uh, June 7th, uh, which should be a morning appointment again, just like this, but we'll call you the week before and uh, just make sure, remind you of the appointment. Oh, yep, yeah, no, six months sounds fine. Uh, yeah, morning works best for me. Okay, great. I know you don't know what you're doing now, June 6th, but we'll call you in before. We got you in the book, and uh, if you need anything before that, remember all these other services we do, blah, 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 blah. I leave my job, and a lot of you who are listening, who have used the dentist clothes or are using the dentist clothes, your company is exploding. You're doing it to every single person, and you're confident in asking. Now, all of a sudden, think about this. Think about if 90% of the people you did last year did their windows every six months. I got guys now who have months of work booked. They're hiring people, getting new trucks and all that because of the dentist clothes. Because they're not even into spring yet, but they already have spring booked because of the people in fall. Think about that. If you're going into your year right now, how much money is set on the books right now for 2023 how many jobs are in the schedule for 2023 if you made a hundred thousand dollars in 2022 you should have ninety thousand dollars already on the books hey 
even if you have crappy, you're not good at the dentist clothes and you're not confident in it yet and you get 75% of those people, 50% of those people, that means that right now, if you did $100,000 worth of different clients last year, instead of having zero on the books or $1,200 or whatever you may have, you could have $50,000 booked for 2023. $50,000. You didn't do any advertising yet this year. So guess what? Even if you have bad numbers, you get those people on, you're already starting the year with money on the books. You can schedule, you can hire, you can know what you're doing. You know when there is business and you can advertise on top of that. If you're telling me for one minute that you can do more growth next year without doing the dentist clothes, you're absolutely bananas. Because I'm still going to sell the same as you're going to sell, but I already have $50,000 on the books. Do the dentist clothes. It works. It's the greatest thing you'll ever hear. What doesn't work is not bothering someone. I get that a lot too where people are like, yeah, I just don't want to like, I don't want to push it. We're a luxury business. We make people happy. That's literally what we do. Of course, you're going to let people know, hey, you like being happy? I can make you happy all the time. Let's book more service. No one needs to. You're not taking advantage of anybody because if it doesn't make them happy and they don't want to do the service, they're going to say no. You're not bothering people. You're keeping up with them and it is your job to make sure that they get done regularly. If I have a 50% close rate on my dentist clothes, those are the 50% I need to call all the time. Twice a year, in fact. I need to send emails, letters, postcards, chocolates. I have to get them back because they were so happy the first time. I want them to be happy again. Guess what? I know they're going to love it. So hire us. I need to remind you to hire us. Right? Anyway. Okay. Well, I hope you dug this week's episode. But like I said already in the show, the shameless plug is I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. And don't forget me. If you're putting orders in, please let me do it. A big or small does not matter. You could be putting a $52 order in to get the free shipping. And instead of you putting it in, just shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. If you're logged in, I will see it. I'll confirm your address like I always do. Put the order in and boom. It costs you no dollars extra, no cents extra, not a penny extra. You got a guy. I get credit for the sale. And it's literally like the most awesome high five ever. And I can afford more hair gel, which people always say. Anyway, also, American Window Cleaner Magazine is the greatest magazine ever according to me. So get it. Uh, Nerd out like everybody and go to awcmag.com. Get the magazine. Yes, be that guy that gets a window cleaning magazine. Show your friends. They know you're serious. You'll be better than your competition. It's amazing and it helps the industry continue to be better. So go do all that stuff and until next week, make sure that you are knowing what works and what doesn't, but more importantly, you're epic.